Welcome in to Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in. Going to do this every week of the season here in 2022, Jaguars Rookie Stock Watch. We're going to take a look at how each rookie performed during the week and which direction they're trending. You can hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo and uh, respond to some of my takes on here, certainly. Follow Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag. Please, if you would, hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube, and if you're on a different podcast platform, leave us a nice review if you enjoy the show. We really appreciate it. All right, so starting off with the number one overall pick, Travon Walker. Definitely had some splash plays in this one, right? An interception, a big sack. I really liked what I saw overall. Okay, Trayvon Walker, again, the first overall pick outside linebacker for the Jaguars. Had him lined up on the left side at times, had him lined up on the right side. I thought he looked most effective as a pass rusher, rushing from the defensive left side and the offensive right side. Uh, That's where you saw him really take advantage of Sam Cosme with his incredible explosiveness off the line of scrimmage, his length. Um, and he was able to swipe and, and just beat Sam Cosme with speed around the edge and get Carson Wentz on the ground. But you did see him do some nice things on the right side. I thought overall as a run defender, very stout, was not tested all that often. They didn't really run it right at him. Uh, but he looked stout. He, he, he stayed home, uh, looked fundamentally sound as a run defender. Um, and then <clears throat> looking at the big plays he made outside of that sack, in the first quarter, uh, Carson Wentz and, and these this commander's offense, they decided we're going to try to see if Trevon Walker can handle a screen right to him. And he didn't handle it very well. He didn't stay home. And then when he tried to get back, the uh, left tackle was in perfect position to uh, guard him from, from getting to the ball carrier, took advantage of him, t- made a big play on offense. They, they decided to keep testing him. And that is when he picked up a really big tackle for no gain. Over on the defensive right side there, he was able to read and react to that screen, tackled it for no gain, and then later on against the screen again, picked up that interception where uh, he's, he's pushing the pocket, pushing the pocket, reading the quarterback, and Carson Wentz just didn't see him. And he uses his incredible length, athleticism, reaction time to go pick off a pass, eerily similar to the way he picked off a pass a little bit further down the field during his days at Georgia. But just showing the length, the athleticism, the ball skills was a massive play for the Jaguars defense. I do think he looked better on the defensive left side from a pass rush standpoint. Against the run, he was good on both sides. I love that they tested him with the screen. He kind of got taken advantage of early. They decided to test him twice more, and uh, he said, no, sir. Big tackle for no gain, and then the interception in enemy territory that really set up the Jaguars with a great position to score. Was he dominant from a pass rush perspective? No. Uh, Was he effective? Yes, he did get some pressures. Uh, Outside of the sack, I thought he did do some good things. The Commanders had a really nice game plan here, getting the ball out quickly, uh, moving the pocket, not really allowing the Jaguars defenders, pass rushers to pin their ears back all that often. But I think Trevon Walker had a really good performance, good against the run. He made splash plays, and that's why you take people at number one overall. That is what you're looking for. Big tackles, uh, an interception, a big sack. Trevon Walker provided all of that, and he's just going to keep growing in this defense. So I think you can be really encouraged by what you saw from Trevon Walker in week one. I'm giving him a B plus. His stock is definitely trending in the right direction. Devin Lloyd, the Jaguars' second first-round pick in 2022, they traded up for off-ball linebacker out of Utah. He had a really rough start to this one, um, just in space. You saw Curtis Samuel juke him out of his jock strap, and then you saw J.D. McKissick as well, able to scoot past him with a quick little move. Those little jitterbug, elusive-type runners, um, they got the best of him early on in this game, but I thought he really settled in, finished the game with 11 total tackles, uh, came up with a huge sack on that two-point try, 
uh, late in the game that was very clutch and, and, and a big play for that defense and for the Jaguars as a whole. I thought against the run, like I mentioned, he he settled down and he got comfortable and started making some big plays and, and just being a reliable tackler. I thought you saw his athleticism and length on display on a few occasions where he's able to make tackles and attempt tackles that a lot of players just simply can't because of his athleticism and length. That gives him such a huge tackle radius and impact radius that he's able to make some plays a lot of people would not be able to make. Was not perfect. I think uh, you know he was targeted three times in coverage, gave up completions all three times. Those were all really in man coverage situations, and he did have tight coverage. He did not allow those those ball carriers to uh, escape him or evade him, or pass catchers to escape him or evade him, I should say. Um, so it was tight coverage in zone. He looked really good, really comfortable. Liked what I saw overall. Uh, down the stretch, but there was a few big mistakes early on. I'm giving Devin Lloyd a C plus, a lot of room to grow. I think his stock is trending in the right direction as he trended in the right direction as the game uh, as the game went forward and really had a good second half for the Jaguars. Looking at Luke Fortner, the third round pick, 65th overall. Um, I think he had a tremendous game as a run blocker. Looked really good, um, making an impact there and burying some defenders. Uh, He had some plays where he was able to make an impact on multiple defenders to help clear the way for runners. I really liked that. In a pass protection standpoint, or from a pass protection standpoint, left some to be desired. And again, this is a rookie starting in his first game, playing against Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, some really talented defenders. Uh, He did give up four pressures in the game. Um, I, I think... For the most part, when you're talking about 45 dropbacks, he looked pretty good in pass protection. Certainly, there's room to grow there. Uh, Just understanding what defenses are trying to do, how they're trying to attack him, and um, continuing to get more experience. I'm giving Fortner a C+. Really, really good as a run blocker in this one. Needs to show a little bit of development um, as a pass protector. And again, incredibly tough matchup. But I think his stock is also trending in the right direction. Chad Muma, he only played eight defensive snaps, uh, played a ton of special teams, no glaring mistakes on special teams. He was in there close on a couple of those coverage tackles, uh, so it looked like he was doing good in pursuit. On the eight defensive snaps, it was mostly coverage. Uh, He only got in on defense to to spell Devin Lloyd a couple times and then also to spell Foy Aluokun once. But... Uh, thought he looked really comfortable, athletic, instinctive, moved well, very limited sample size. I'm giving Chad Muma a B for his efforts. Again, incredibly small sample size. Snoop Connor was inactive, the Jaguars' fifth round running back. Uh, they decided to activate Jamichael Hasty instead of Connor. Hasty has a little bit more value as a versatile football player, can line up at receiver, can move around, do different things, go in motion and provide a little bit of a different threat for the Jaguars' offense. Buster Brown did not play in this one either. The seventh-round pick out of Arkansas, of course, Gregory Jr. did not make the active roster. So uh, that's all the Jaguars' 2022 draft picks. I think most of them are trending in the right direction. Certainly Trevon Walker was the brightest star out of all of them. I think Devin Lloyd and Luke Fortner both improved throughout the game. Fortner had a really tough matchup uh, with some of those interior defenders. Chad Muma didn't get on the field a whole lot defensively, but when he was out there, looked good. I'm also going to go ahead and throw in Travis Etienne to this mix every week because he did not get to play in 2021. Uh, This is his rookie year for all intents and purposes, And he carried the ball four times for 47 yards, two catches for 18 yards, did have a drop that certainly would have been a touchdown, Uh, just had to make one corner miss there. And as we all know, based on what we saw from uh, from Travis Etienne uh, throughout his college career and out here on Sunday, he probably would have made that guy miss. Uh, Benjamin St. Juiced, good young football player. Don't think he's bringing down Travis Etienne in the open field to stop him from getting into the end zone. Um, He was able to get open on several occasions down the field. 
Trevor Lawrence missed him for a touchdown early on in the game that probably would have changed things. Uh, he did have the fumble, which really could have been looked at as a drop as well. Um, I thought pass pro, he improved throughout the game, and I don't think they were planning on having him in pass pro a ton. But as the commander's defensive front really started to get things ramped up and, and start to really put a lot of pressure on Trevor Lawrence, the Jags decided to uh, keep their backs in the backfield to chip and pass protect a little bit more. thought he improved um, throughout the game in that, throughout the second half. Did a much better job. But the bottom line is Travis Etienne's an offensive weapon. You want to get the ball in his hands. He can't be dropping it or fumbling it. Certainly needs to improve in that department. But when he had the ball in his hands, looked incredibly explosive. Uh, he was moving at a different speed than everyone else on the field. There was a couple times where it looked like defenders might have had him dead to rights. He's able to just use his speed and explosiveness and quickness to scoot past them. I thought you saw a back who is going to be dynamic, who's going to be a big playmaker, a, a big play threat as a runner and a receiver for the Jaguars. Um, certainly there was a couple of mistakes that you want to see tightened up and you want to see him improve and not drop a pass and certainly not fumble. Um, I think the fumble was a little fluky. Just the way Derek Forrest came in there with his helmet. But again, needs to show more consistency. Um, but from a playmaking standpoint, this is a guy that led the NFL this week, uh, according to Pro Football Focus, in average yards after contact. You'll love to see that. Um, you'll love to see that. And James Robinson did a good job on that front as well. But I'm giving Travis Etienne a C plus because he did have the mistakes. But make no mistake about it, this guy looks like an explosive playmaker. A guy who can be a difference maker, a game changer, and I'm really excited to see what he can do moving forward. I'm excited for this entire rookie class, really. I thought everything, everyone that played had encouraging moments that you can build off of and continue to develop these guys. So I'm excited to see how it plays out in week two as the Colts come to town. But that is going to do it. You can follow me on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo, Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. And if you want to support the channel further here, you can go pick up a new hat, new t-shirt, genjag.com. Link in the description below. Thanks so much for tuning in, Duval.